الله رب العالمين صلى الله على محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم إن شاء الله tonight we're going to take a new chapter from this beneficial book by الشيخ العلامة الشيخ صالح بن فوزان الفوزان which is entitled Summary of Islamic Jurisprudence and the title of this chapter Finding Lost Objects which is in Arabic called Luqata. Luqata, which is finding lost objects. So Luqata, which is finding lost object, refers to any, any lost property, excluding animals. <clears throat> excluding, because animals, they know their way around. So like a camel knows their way around, sheep, goat. So those don't worry about them. They'll find their way out and they find their way back to their destination and their, where, their place where they come from. The Sheikh he said, to any lost property excluding animals found by someone, Islam, the true religion, enjoins the protection, safe keeping, and taking care of one's fellow Muslim's property, even in case of lost and found properties. Look, Islam, there is nothing that you don't find in Islam. Subhanallah, everything is there. A lost property is surely one of the following three kinds. So the lost property is going to be three types. The first one, insignificant object. Something that is not very important, right? A lost property can be an article that people do not usually care about, such as a whip. Who cares about a whip? a loaf of bread, a fruit, a stick, and the like. If someone finds such a lost property, it is permissible for him to take it and make use of it. At once, without advertising, having found it. So you don't need to go and advertise, publicize, and all that, because it's not something that important. To illustrate, Jabir, May Allah be pleased with him, narrated. The Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, gave us permission concerning sticks, ropes, whips, or such like things, which a man of us may accidentally find, that one may benefit from them, related by Abu Dawood. So this is the proof and evidence that the Prophet, he gave the Sahaba the permission to benefit from those things because they are not very important. They are not. They, they don't have like a big value. So you, if you find it, you can, you actually take it and, and benefit from it. <laughs> so that is the first category. Second category: animals safe from small predators. The second kind of lost property is an animal that can defend themselves against small wild beasts by means of their big size such as camels, horses, cows, or mules, <laughs> or by means of flying, such as birds, or by means of running fast, such as antelopes, or by using their canine teeth, such as cheetahs. It is prohibited to pick up such kind of lost animals and take them on the pretext that they are lost properties, such animals cannot be possessed when found, even if the finder advertises having found, it, found them. When the man who found the lost camel asked the Prophet wasallam, what to do, he replied, it is none of your concern, he told them. It has its feet and its water container, reservoir. It can go on drinking water and eating leaves of trees until its owner finds it. That's it. Leave it. Like camel, related by al-Bukhari and Muslim. Moreover, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu said, whoever takes a lost animal that he finds is considered to have gone astray. According to the four, uh, four mentioned hadith, the Prophet ﷺ enjoins Muslims to leave such a lost animal alone to reach water and eat the leaves of trees and it, until its owner finds it. 
The same ruling applies to big objects and tools such as large pots, wooden articles, iron articles, and all such large things that can, that can hardly be lost or moved from their places. Picking, it, picking them up, such large objects, and taking them as lost property is prohibited. It is even more entitled to be prohibited than the aforementioned kind of lost animals. The third, money, belongings, and animal <clears throat> menaced by small predators. The third kind of lost articles is properties such as money, belongings, and animals that cannot defend themselves against small wild beasts, such as sheep, wind, camel, and calves, because they are young, they are very small. It is permissible for the person who is confident of his owner, of his own tr trustworthiness, to pick up and keep such kind of lost articles which fall in the three category. The first, lawful edible animals such as wind, camels, eels, and hens. If a person finds a lost animal, he is permitted to use it in one of the following three ways that benefit the original owner most. Number one, he can eat it and thus use its price, owes its price to its owner. So he can actually use it and then he has to pay the owner back. He has to pay the owner back. Number two, he can sell it and keep its price to give it to its owner. When he appears and the finder is certain that he is the real owner. Number three, he can keep it without possessing it, provide it with food and the like at his own expense, and then get back what he has spent from its owner when he appears to reclaim it. When the Prophet ﷺ was asked about the ruling on finding a lost an ownerless EU. He replied, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, take it, for it is either for you, for your brother, means, i.e., for another fellow who may find it, or for the wolf, related by Al Bukhari and Muslim. This hadith means that the lost, ownerless EU doesn't have an owner, who was weak and liable to perish. So it would be better to be taken by the man who found it, for he would not take it, for he would not take it, someone else would do. Otherwise, the wolf would eat it. Commentating on this hadith, Ibn al Qayyim said, this hadith implies the permissibility of picking up and taking a lost sheep. And that if the owner of a lost eel, eel means a female uh, lamb, that's eel, does not come to claim it, it will belong to the one who has found it. Thus, he can eat it and owe its price to its owner or to sell it and keep its price to give it to its owner when he appears or keep it and feed it as at his own expense, scholars unanimously agree that its owner has the right to take it back if it comes before it is eaten by the way who has found it. <coughs> B. Perishable. When the found object is liable to become rotten, such as watermelon and fruits, one who finds it should do what best benefit the owner. The finder can eat it and pay its price to the owner or sell it and keep its price to give to the owner when he meets him. C, all kinds of properties, excluding A and B, such as money and utensils. If one finds such lost articles, one must keep it with him as a trust and advertise having found it. However, 
No one is permitted to pick up any lost article and keep it unless he is confident of his own trustworthiness and able to define its description when necessary. To illustrate, Zayd ibn Khalid al-Juhani, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated, a man asked the Prophet Sallallahu about the ruling on finding lost gold or silver, i.e. money. And he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, replied, remember the description of its container, i.e. the purse or the like, and the strings it is tied with, and make public announcement about it for one year. One year. Then, if no one identifies it, you can utilize it, but you have to keep it as a trust. And if, the, if its owner shows up to reclaim it, at any time after, afterwards, give it to him. Then the man asked him about the ruling on finding a lost sheep. He replied, take it for it is either for you, for your brother, i.e. For, for another fellow who may find it, or for the wolf. After that, he وسلم, was asked about the ruling on finding a lost camel. And he replied, it is none of your concern. He has his feet and its water container, reservoir. It can go on drinking water and eating leaves or trees until its owner finds it, related by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. By saying, make public announcement about it for one year. The Prophet ﷺ wants the person who picks up such a lost property, gold or silver or money, to announce the description of the lost article. Wherever people assemble, such as marketplaces, in front of, of the mosque, it's a job. It's, it, it's a job, isn't it? Subhanallah. Yeah, it's not easy. It's a job. And in meetings and gatherings for one year, during the first week, such a person is required to make public announcement about the lost article every day, as it, as it is more, more likely that its owner will be searching for it to claim it. During the first week after this week is over, the finder is to follow the common convention in his making a public announcement about it. He follows the custom of the country. The aforesaid, because, you know, the customs, they tell you you can bring it to a place and then they have a lost or found, you know, place where you can leave it there until the owner comes and claim it. Today is much easier than the past because the past they didn't have that type of facility. But alhamdulillah, now we have those facilities. It's much easier now. The Sheikh he said, the afore, aforesaid hadith indicates the obligation of making a public announcement about finding a lost article. The Prophet's word remembered the description of its container because you have to know exactly how it looks. How are you going to announce it if you don't know? It doesn't make no sense. Like you found uh, uh, money uh, with uh, like certain, you know, what's on, on, the, on the money and things like that. So you have to be very precise what it is. And some people, they don't fear Allah. They may come and say, it's mine. Some people do that. A'udhu billah min dalik. Tayyip. Prophet ﷺ's word, he said, remember the description of, of its container. Like the purse, the wallet, description of that container. Very important. I had the purse or the like, and the strings it is tied with indicate that it is obligatory upon the finder to know. <clears throat> yes, <clears throat> it is obligatory upon the, the finder to know the description of the found object. Thus, when its owner comes and describes it correctly, it must be given back to him. However, if a person gives a false description of a lost article, it is impermissible to give it to him. When the Prophet ﷺ said, then if no one identifies it, you can utilize it. This implies that after one year, the lost article belongs to the finder. 
after making the necessary public announcement about having found in it. However, the finder should not make a use of it unless he knows its description, its container, purse, tie-in material, amount kind, and such distinctive description. If its owner comes after one year and describes it correctly, it must be given back to him, as the Prophet ﷺ said, and if its owner shows up to reclaim it at any time afterwards, give it to him in the light of the above. The rulings on finding lost object can be summarized as follows. First, if a person finds a lost object, he is not permitted to pick it up and keep it unless he is confident of his own trustworthiness and able to announce having found it publicly so as to find its owner. Accordingly, if one does not trust oneself to take the proper measures for the found object, it is impermissible for one to pick up and keep it. If one does, one is legally considered an insurper for subjecting others' property to loss. So it is not permissible to take that um, initiatives if you know that you cannot, you will not be able to do it. Secondly, before taking a lost pro article, its, its finder must know its container, tie-in tie -in material, amount kind, amount and also the kind, and such descriptions as enjoined by the Prophet ﷺ in the, in the aforementioned hadith. And the Prophet's command indicates obligation. The word container includes any envelope, pur purse, bag, piece of cloth, or the like, in which the found object is wrapped and tied. Third, it is obligatory upon the person who picks up a lost article to make public announcement about it for one year. During the first week, such a person is required to make public announcement about it every day. And then he is to follow the common convention in his making public announcement about it. He can say in his public announcement something like, has anyone lost anything or any one of the kind such as announcement should be made in places where people assemble, such as marketplaces, and in front of mosques after performing congregational prayers. However, it is prohibited to make such announcement or finding a lost object inside the masjid. It is not permissible. For masjid are not built for that. The Prophet ﷺ said, if anyone hears a man in the mosque asking about something he has lost, he should say to him, may Allah not restore it to you. Subhanallah. For the mosque are not built for that. Subhanallah. Yeah, because now the, 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 you're going to turn the, 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 the masjid into like a marketplace, subhanAllah. Fourth, if the claimant of a lost article describe it correctly, it is obligatory upon the finder to give it to him without asking for any more proofs or an oath as enjoined by the Prophet wasallam. Moreover, a claimant corrects description of a lost article substitute any further proofs or oath. Rather, his correct description is more reliable and credible than a proof or an oath. Also, the finder of a lost article must give back to its owner any direct or indirect profits he obtained through the article. However, if the claimant cannot give the right description of the article, it must not be given to him as it is considered a trust in the custody of the finder. Therefore, it is impermissible for the finder to give the article to someone who cannot prove that he is its owner. Fifth, if the owner of the lost article does not come to claim it during one year, of the public announcement made by the finder. It becomes the ladders, however, 
means it becomes his. However, the one who found it. However, before using the article in any way, the finder must know its description well, so that whenever its owner shows up and identifies it, the finder can give it back to him or compensate him for it if it is not there. I mean, let's say he used it. And then, and then the owner comes out of the blue and he describes it exactly as it is. Then he has to give him back you know, the money, whatever he spent. طيب. The Sheikh said, so that whenever its owner shows up and identifies it, the finder can give it back to him or compensate him for it if it is not there. This is because the ownership of a finder of a lost article is temporary, temporary one, which becomes void once the real owner appears and claims it. Number six, scholars differ regarding the ruling on picking up lost objects within al-haram, the sanctuary, the holy sanctuary. So this is a different ruling now. They differ regarding whether the lost object found there belongs to the finder after making public announcement about it for one year or whether it does not belong to him at all. Some scholars are, the, are of the opinion that the lost object found within al-haram takes the same ruling on other lost objects found elsewhere due to the generalization of the hadith in this regard. It means the hadith is general, so al-haram will be included in that as well. Al-haram will be included in that as well because the hadith is general. In this regard, however, other scholars maintain that it is impermissible to possess a lost article found there and that it is obligatory to make public announcement about it forever. As the Prophet ﷺ said about al-haram, it is not allowed to pick up its fallen things, i.e. the lost object found there, except by a person who will look for its owner by announcing it having found it publicly. This is also the opinion maintained by Sheikh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah who said, the lost article within al-haram can never be owned by the one who picks it up and it is obligatory to make public announcement about it forever. So that's an exception. That's an exception when it comes to al-haram. Uh, the, the, the one year thing does not apply. So it's forever. So when the owner comes, you give it to him. Even after one year, uh, you cannot own it. طيب. The opinion is implied in the aforementioned hadith that prohibits picking up a lost article found in al-haram, within al-haram. The seventh. If someone leaves an animal in a desert due to its inability to walk, or his inability to keep it. It will belong to the one who finds it and takes it. The Prophet ﷺ said, if anyone finds an animal whose owner could not afford it, and so they have released it, and then the finder takes it, it will belong to him. This is because the owner of such an animal released it out of lack of interest in it. So it has the same ruling on, on things whose owners get rid of due to lack of interest. When someone loses his pair of shoes or any of his belongings and finds, finds a different one instead in the, its place, it, it is considered a lost article that does not belong to him. Being found in the same place or similar to his loss then does not make it his, rather his Obliged, some people do that. You know, when they lose their, their shoes, they take someone else's shoes. This is haram. This is, it's not yours. Why can you take it? It does not belong to him. Beyond, uh, being found in the same place or similar to his lost item does not make it his. Rather, he's obligated to advertise having found it for one year. And then he is permitted to take only what is worth his lost one, and then give the rest to ch in charity 
on behalf of its owner. Number eight, if a child or a foolish person takes a lost uh, article, his guardian must take it and make a public announcement about it. This is base. This is because a child or a foolish person is not legally qualified to keep trust. If the guardian leaves the lost article to the child or to the foolish person, and it is damaged, he becomes financially liable for it, as he is the one who to be blamed for its damage. If the guardian makes a public announcement about the lost article for one year, and no one ident identifies it, then it belongs to the child or to the foolish person in his custody, as is the case of any grown-up or sane person. Ninth, if a person picks up a lost article from a place and then he places it again in the same place, he becomes legally liable for it as it becomes a trust in his custody that must be kept like other trust, whereas leaving it may cause it to be lost. In fact, the Islamic legal rulings concerning lost and found properties show how Islam takes care, take, takes great interest in Muslims' properties and how it is being on protecting, very keen on protecting and safeguarding them. This, this in general indicates that Islam urges Muslims to cooperate in righteousness and good. We pray to Allah glorified and exalted be he to make us from Firm in Islam and let us die as Muslims. Today somebody asked me about uh, like a missing husband. Right? This happen, can, can happen. Like um, she asked about her, her husband who is missing for more, more than one year. Yes. So what is the ruling on that? Uh, the, does that nullify... The, the nikah, does that nullify the nikah? Is the nikah is the null void? No, it does not. It does not. Because a woman came to Umar radiallahu anha, radiallahu an, and <clears throat> she told him that, that her husband was missing. He went to Salat al-Isha and he disappeared. So, <clears throat> so that man he went to Salat al-Isha and then he disappeared completely. So he told her to wait four years. Four years. And then after four years, she came back to Umar radiallahu anhu. She asked him. He said, go ahead and start your idda. Start your idda. It's like as if this man is dead. Right? Start your idda, the four months and ten days. So when she started her idda, he showed up. No, 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 wait, wait, sorry, sorry. I missed, I missed something. After her idda finished, she got married. She got remarried. She got remarried, and then he showed up. He showed up. So when he went to the house, he found another man there. He said, he said what's going on? Why do why, why you have another man? She said, go and talk to Umar. So he went to Umar. He told him, you have two choices now. Because you've been missing for more than four years, you know? So your wife, she got remarried. Now you have two choices. Either you want your wife back or, or you don't want her. He said, no, that's it. She got, she got remarried. Uh, I don't want her. Then he gave him as a compensation, mahar. His mahr. The mahr that he gave her, Umar gave, gave him from the treasury of the Muslims. So this was a very interesting case. I wanted to share that with you. Because this, these things, they happen. They, they do happen. Uh, uh, husband is missing. The, the, the wife waits for a long time and the husband doesn't show up. So in that case she should go to the courthouse, the Muslim courthouse, and the judge will look into that. Yeah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all 
العلم النافع والعمل الصالح الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله على محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم